Hey Alpha Nurses, I'm Nurse Sandra from alphanurseguide.com. This is NCLEX Brain Review Lesson 45, 30 NCLEX Practice Questions. You can get my notes on Etsy. Be sure to follow my store to get any updates of new notes. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok for more content. All links are in the description. Without the way, let's get started. The nurse is collecting data from a client who has been diagnosed with placenta previa. Which findings should the nurse expect to note? Select all that apply. A. Uterine rigidity. B. Uterine tenderness. C. Severe abdominal pain. D. Bright red vaginal bleeding. E. Soft, relaxed, and non-tender uterus. The correct answers are D. Bright red vaginal bleeding and E. Soft, relaxed, and non-tender uterus. Rationale, painless bright red vaginal bleeding during the second or third trimester of pregnancy is a sign of placenta previa. The client will have a soft and relaxed non-tender uterus. In clients with abruptio placentae severe abdominal pain is present. Uterine tenderness accompanies placental abruption. Additionally, with abruptio placentae, the abdomen will feel hard and board-like on palpation as the blood penetrates the myometrium and causes uterine irritability. The community health nurse has completed a teaching session about anthrax with members of the community. The nurse reinforcing the teaching to those attending that anthrax can be transmitted via which routes? Select all that apply. A. Skin. B. Kissing. C. Inhalation. D. Gastrointestinal. E. Direct contact with an infected individual. The correct answers are A. Skin, C. Inhalation, and D. Gastrointestinal. Rationale, anthrax is caused by bacillus anthracis, and it can be contracted through the digestive system, abrasions in the skin, or inhalation. It cannot be spread from person to person. The nurse is assisting with planning care, for a client with an internal radiation implant, which should be included in the plan of care. Select all that apply. A. Wearing gloves when emptying the client's bedpan. B. Keeping all linens in the room until the implant is removed. C. Wearing a film badge when in the client's room. D. Wearing a lead apron when providing direct care to the client. E. Placing the client in a semi-private room at the end of the hallway. The correct answers are A. Wearing gloves when emptying the client's bedpan, B. Keeping all linens in the room until the implant is removed, C. Wearing a film badge when in the client's room, and D. Wearing a lead apron when providing direct care to the client. Rationale A private room with a private bath is essential if a client has an internal radiation implant. This is necessary to prevent the accidental exposure of other clients to radiation. The remaining options identify interventions that are necessary for a client with a radiation device. The nurse is assigned to care for a child who is scheduled for an appendectomy. Which prescriptions does the nurse anticipate to be prescribed? Select all that apply. A. Administer a fleet enema. B. Initiate an intravenous line. C. Maintain nothing by mouth status. D. Administer intravenous antibiotics. E. Administer preoperative medications. F. Place a heating pad on the abdomen to decrease pain. The correct answers are B. Initiate an intravenous line. C. Maintain nothing by mouth status. D. Administer intravenous antibiotics, and E. Administer preoperative medications. Rationale, during the preoperative period, enemas or laxatives should not be administered. In addition, heat should not be applied to the abdomen. Any of these interventions can cause the rupture of the appendix and resultant peritonitis. Intravenous fluids would be started, and the child should receive nothing by mouth while awaiting surgery. Antibiotics are usually administered because of the risk of perforation. Preoperative medications are administered as prescribed. The nurse is monitoring a preterm labor client 
who is receiving magnesium sulfate intravenously. The nurse should monitor for which adverse effects of this medication. Select all that apply. A. Flushing. B. Hypertension. C. Increased urine output. D. Depressed respirations. E. Extreme muscle weakness. F. Hyperactive deep tendon reflexes. The correct answers are A. Flushing, D. Depressed respirations, and E. Extreme muscle weakness. Rationale Magnesium sulfate is a central nervous system depressant, and it relaxes smooth muscle, including the uterus. It is used to stop preterm labor contractions, and it is used for preeclamptic clients to prevent seizures. Adverse effects include flushing, depressed respirations, depressed deep tendon reflexes, hypotension, extreme muscle weakness decreased urine output, pulmonary edema, and elevated serum magnesium levels. A client in the cardiac step-down unit requires suctioning for excess mucus secretions. The nurse should be most careful to monitor the client for which dysrhythmia during this procedure. A. Bradycardia B. Tachycardia C. Premature ventricular beats D. Heart block The correct answer is A. Bradycardia. Rationale, suctioning can cause a vagal response and bradycardia. Answer B is unlikely and, therefore, not most important, although it can occur. Answers C and D can occur as well, but they are less likely. The nursing student is asked to describe the correct steps for performing adult cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Arrange the actions in the order that they should be performed. All options must be used. 1. Initiate breathing. 2. Open the client's airway. 3. Perform chest compressions. 4. Determine unconsciousness by shaking the client and asking, are you okay? The correct order is 4. Determine unconsciousness by shaking the client and asking, are you okay? 3. Perform chest compressions. 2. Open the client's airway. And 1. Initiate breathing. Rationale, the sequence for basic CPR for healthcare providers follows CAB, compressions, airway, and breathing. After determining unconsciousness, compressions are started. A client with a major burn is admitted to the emergency department. In which priority order should the nurse implement these actions? Arrange the actions in the order that they should be performed. All options must be used. 1. Establish airway. 2. Insert Foley catheter. 3. Initiate fluid therapy. 4. Insert a nasogastric tube. The correct order is 1. Establish airway. 3. Initiate fluid therapy. 2. Insert Foley catheter. And 4. Insert a nasogastric tube. Rationale The actions that the nurse would take include the following 1. Establish an airway. Administer oxygen as prescribed. Often the healthcare provider inserts an endotracheal tube to ensure a patent airway. 2. Initiate fluid therapy. Intravenous fluid therapy, usually with Ringer's lactate solution, is started immediately. The amount of fluid given is related to the percentage of total body surface area burned. The client is weighted, so the HCP can determine the amount of fluids needed. 3. A Foley catheter is inserted for hourly urinary output. An hourly output of 30 to 50 milliliters is recommended. Intravenous fluids will assist in maintaining renal perfusion. 4. A nasogastric tube is inserted because clients with severe burns often develop a paralytic ileus as a result of trauma. A 7-year-old child is admitted to the pediatric unit with acute exacerbation of asthma due to infection. The healthcare provider has written the following prescriptions. In which priority order should the nurse implement the prescriptions? Arrange the actions in the order that they should be performed. All options must be used. 1. Clear liquids PO as tolerated. 2. High Fowler's position. 3. Chest X-ray. 4. Erythromycin ethylsuccinate. 
5. 200 mg orally, every 6 hours. 6. O2 via nasal cannula, at 2 liter per minute. The correct order is 2. High Fowler's position, 6. O2 via nasal cannula, at 2 liter per minute, 4. Erythromycin ethyl succinate, 5. 200 mg orally, every 6 hours, 3. Chest x ray, 1. Clear liquids PO as tolerated. Rationale Placing the child in high Fowler's position first will assist in breathing. The oxygen can then be applied. Administering the antibiotic is the next priority. The chest x ray should not be done until the child has had oxygen and the first dose of the antibiotic. The clear liquid diet is the last task to be performed. The nurse is providing directions to the unlicensed assistive personnel regarding client's hygiene needs, which is the priority order in which the UAP should assist the clients. Arrange the actions in the order that they should be performed. All options must be used. 1. A client who is independent with ADL. 2. A confused client who is incontinent of stool and urine. 3. A client who is on bed rest after multiple trauma. 4. A client who was admitted for dehydration and failure to thrive. The correct order is 2. A confused client who is incontinent of stool and urine. 3. A client who is on bed rest after multiple trauma. 4. A client who was admitted for dehydration and failure to thrive. And 1. A client who is independent with ADL. Rationale The confused client should be bathed first because bowel slash bladder incontinence would lead to skin breakdown. The client who has multiple traumas is at risk to develop skin breakdown and wound infection. The client who was admitted for dehydration and failure to thrive requires assistance with hygiene needs. The client who is independent with activities of daily living does not require assistance with hygiene. What are the steps in order of priority for application of an ostomy appliance? Arrange the actions in the order they should be performed. All options must be used. 1. Assess the stoma and skin. 2. Remove the used pouch and barrier. 3. Perform hand hygiene and don gloves. 4. Cleanse the peristomal area with warm water. 5. Press the adhesive backing of the pouch against the skin. 6. Cut the opening on the appliance 1 16th inch larger than the stoma. The correct order is 3. Perform hand hygiene and don gloves. 2. Remove the used pouch and barrier. 4. Cleanse the peristomal area with warm water. 1. Assess the stoma and skin. 6. Cut the opening on the appliance 1 16th inch larger than the stoma. And 5. Press the adhesive backing of the pouch against the skin. Rationale The nurse would wash the hands and don gloves before removing the pouch and barrier. The peristomal area is cleansed with warm water to remove residue and improve visualization. The stoma is assessed for color and the skin is checked for irritation. The appliance is measured and cut 1 16th inch larger than the stoma to prevent strangulation of the stoma or too much room for skin irritation between the stoma and appliance. The adhesive backing of the appliance is pressed against the skin avoiding wrinkles to achieve seal. Salicylic acid is prescribed for a client with a diagnosis of psoriasis. The nurse monitors the client knowing that, which would indicate the presence of systemic toxicity from this medication. A. Tinnitus. B. Diarrhea. C. Constipation. D. Decreased respirations. The correct answer is A. Tinnitus. Rationale. Salicylic acid is absorbed readily through the skin and systemic toxicity can result. Symptoms include tinnitus, dizziness, hypernia, and psychological disturbances. Constipation and diarrhea are not associated with salicylism. Mephenide acetate is prescribed for the client with a burn injury. When applying the medication, the client complains of local discomfort and burning. Which is the most appropriate nursing action? A. Notifying the health care provider. B. Discontinuing the medication. C. Informing the client that this is normal. 
D. Applying a thinner film than prescribed to the burn site. The correct answer is C. Informing the client that this is normal. Rationale, mephenide acetate is bacteriostatic for gram-negative and gram-positive organisms and is used to treat burns to reduce bacteria present in avascular tissues. The client should be informed that the medication will cause local discomfort and burning and that this is a normal reaction. The burn client is receiving treatments of topical mephenide acetate to the site of injury. The nurse monitors the client knowing that, which indicates a systemic effect has occurred. A. Hyperventilation B. Elevated blood pressure C. Local pain at the burn site D. Local rash at the burn site. The correct answer is A. Hyperventilation. Rationale, mephenide acetate is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor and can suppress renal excretion of acid, thereby causing acidosis. Clients receiving this treatment should be monitored for signs of an acid-base imbalance. If this occurs, the medication should be discontinued for one to two days. Option C and D describe local rather than systemic effects. An elevated blood pressure may be expected from the pain that occurs with a burn injury. Isotretinoin is prescribed for a client with severe acne. Before the administration of this medication, the nurse anticipates that which laboratory test will be prescribed. A. Platelet count. B. Triglyceride level. C. Complete blood count. D. White blood cell count. The correct answer is B. Triglyceride level. Rationale, isotretinoin can elevate triglyceride levels. Blood triglyceride levels should be measured before treatment and periodically thereafter until the effect on the triglycerides has been evaluated. Options A, C, and D do not need to be monitored specifically during this treatment. The nurse is applying a topical corticosteroid to a client with eczema. The nurse should monitor for the potential for increased systemic absorption of the medication if the medication is being applied to which body area? A, back. B, axilla. C, soles of the feet. D, palms of the hands. The correct answer is B. Axilla. Rationale, topical corticosteroids can be absorbed into the systemic circulation. Absorption is higher from regions where the skin is especially permeable and lower from regions in which permeability is poor. The clinic nurse is collecting data on a client being admitted. The nurse notes that the client is taking azelaic acid. Because of the medication prescription, the nurse should suspect that the client is being treated for which condition? A. Acne B. Eczema C. Hair loss D. Minor bruise The correct answer is A. Acne Rationale, azelaic acid is a topical medication used to treat mild to moderate acne. The acid appears to work by suppressing the growth of Propionibacterium acnes and decreasing the proliferation of keratinocytes. The nurse employed in a long-term care facility calls the healthcare provider regarding a new medication prescription because the dose prescribed is higher than the recommended dosage. The nurse is unable to locate the HCP and the medication is due to be administered. Which action should the nurse take? A. Contact the nursing supervisor. B. Administer the dose prescribed. C. Hold the medication until the HCP can be contacted. D. Administer the recommended dose but continue to locate the HCP. The correct answer is A. Contact the nursing supervisor. Rationale, if the HCP writes a prescription that requires clarification, it is the nurse's responsibility to contact the HCP for clarification. If there is no resolution regarding the prescription, because the HCP cannot be located, or because the prescription remains as it was written after talking with the HCP, the nurse should then contact the nurse manager or supervisor for further clarification as to what the next step should be. 
Under no circumstances should the nurse proceed to carry out the prescription until clarification has been obtained. The nurse is assisting in reviewing the critical paths of the clients on the nursing unit. In performing a variance analysis, which indicates the need for further action and analysis. A. Clear breath sounds in a client with heart failure. B. A postoperative client who develops a cough and a fever. C. The absence of a wound infection in a client who had a coronary artery bypass graft. D. A client with diabetes mellitus demonstrating accurate use of a glucometer after teaching. The correct answer is B, a postoperative client who develops a cough and a fever. Rationale, variances are actual deviations or detours from the critical paths. Variances can be positive or negative, avoidable or unavoidable, and can be caused by a variety of factors. Positive variance occurs when the client achieves maximum benefit and is discharged earlier than anticipated. Negative variance occurs when untoward events prevent a timely discharge. A postoperative client who develops a cough and a fever identifies a negative outcome. A nursing student is planning care for a client with paraplegia who is at risk for injury because of spasticity of his leg muscles. The nurse intervenes if the student plans to include which intervention to minimize the risk of injury to the client. A. Use of padded restraints to immobilize the limb. B. Performing range of motion to the affected limbs. C. Removing potentially harmful objects near the spastic limbs. D. Use of as needed prescriptions for muscle relaxants such as baclofen. The correct answer is A. Use of padded restraints to immobilize the limb. Rationale. Range of motion exercises are beneficial in stretching muscles which may diminish spasticity. Removing potentially harmful objects is an important safety measure. Use of muscle relaxants also is indicated if the spasms cause discomfort to the client or pose a risk to the client's safety. Use of limb restraints will not alleviate spasticity and could harm the client. A client was involuntarily admitted to the psychiatric unit because of episodes of extremely violent behavior. The client is demanding to be discharged from the hospital. The nurse reports the information to the charge nurse, and the charge nurse does not allow the client to leave. The nurse understands that, which represents the legal ramifications associated with the charge nurse's behavior. A. The charge nurse will be charged with assault. B. The charge nurse will be charged with slander. C. The charge nurse will be charged with imprisonment. D. No charge will be made against the charge nurse because the charge nurse's actions are reasonable. The correct answer is D. No charge will be made against the charge nurse because the charge nurse's actions are reasonable. Rationale. False imprisonment is an act with the intent to confine a person to a specific area. The nurse can be charged with false imprisonment if the nurse prohibits a client from leaving the hospital, if the client was voluntarily admitted, and if there are no agency or legal policies for detaining the client. On the other hand, if the client has been involuntarily admitted or has agreed to an evaluation before discharge, the nurse's actions are reasonable. The nurse observes an outburst by a client with a history of schizophrenia, during which the client uses extreme foul language. Which appropriate documentation should the nurse make for this occurrence? A. Document that the client is swearing loudly. B. Document that the client is having an outburst. C. Use quotation marks placing dashes and lines in the place of the profane words. D. Use quotation marks exact words and additional objective information about effect and nonverbal behavior. The correct answer is D. Use quotation marks exact words and additional objective information about effect and nonverbal behavior. Rationale. Option D provides accurate, legally defensible information regarding the client's behavior. Options A and B are not objective. Option C is incomplete documentation and is not legally defensible. Emergency surgery is scheduled for a client with a bowel obstruction. The nurse tells the charge nurse 
that she is unable to obtain informed consent from the client because the client has received opioid analgesics and is sedated. The nurse understands that which action should be implemented. A. Performing the surgery without an informed consent. B. Having the client sign the consent form because this is an emergency situation. C. Calling the family and telling them that they must come to the hospital to sign the informed consent. D. Obtaining a telephone consent from the family member and ensuring that the oral consent is witnessed by two persons. The correct answer is D. Obtaining a telephone consent from the family member and ensuring that the oral consent is witnessed by two persons. Rationale Every effort must be made to obtain permission from a responsible family member to perform surgery if the client is unable to sign the consent form. Telephone consent must be witnessed by two persons who hear the family member's oral consent. The two witnesses then sign the consent and document the name of the family member, noting that an oral consent was obtained. In emergencies, the client may be unable to sign and family members may not be available. In this type of a situation, the healthcare provider is legally permitted to perform surgery without consent. Consent is not informed if it is obtained from the client who is confused, unconscious, mentally incompetent, or under the influence of sedatives. A mother calls a neighborhood nurse and tells the nurse that her three-year-old child has just ingested liquid furniture polish. Which action should the nurse instruct the mother to take first? A. Induce vomiting. B. Call an ambulance. C. Call the poison control center. D. Bring the child to the emergency department. The correct answer is C. Call the poison control center. Rationale If a poisoning occurs, the poison control center should be contacted immediately. Vomiting should not be induced without instructions to do so if the victim is unconscious or the substance ingested is a strong corrosive or petroleum product. Bringing the child to the emergency department or calling an ambulance would not be the initial action because this would delay treatment. The poison control center may advise the mother to bring the child to the emergency department. If this is the case, the mother should call an ambulance. The nurse is assisting with caring for a client with abruptio placenta. While caring for the client, the nurse notes that the client begins to develop signs of shock. The nurse should take which action first? A. Monitor the urinary output. B. Monitor the maternal pulse. C. Turn the client onto her side. D. Monitor the maternal blood pressure. The correct answer is C. Turn the client onto her side. Rationale With a pregnant client who is in shock, the nurse would want to increase perfusion to the placenta. A simple way to do this that requires no equipment is to turn the mother on her side. This would increase blood flow to the placenta by relieving pressure from the gravid uterus on the great vessels. The nurse would immediately contact the health care provider. The other options would follow quickly. A woman in active labor has contractions every two to three minutes that last for 45 seconds. The fetal heart rate between contractions is 100 beats per minute. On the basis of these findings, which is the priority nursing action? A. Monitor the maternal vital signs. B. Notify the health care provider immediately. C. Continue monitoring labor and the fetal heart rate. D. Encourage relaxation and breathing techniques between contractions. The correct answer is B. Notify the healthcare provider immediately. Rationale Fetal bradycardia between contractions may indicate the need for immediate medical management. The nurse would immediately contact the healthcare provider. Options A, C, and D will delay necessary and immediate interventions. The nurse is caring for a postpartum client with a diagnosis of thrombophlebitis. The client suddenly complains of chest pain and dyspnea. The nurse should initially check which item. A. Vital signs. B. Fundal height. C. Presence of calf pain. D. Level of consciousness. 
The correct answer is A. Vital signs. Rationale Pulmonary embolism is a complication of thrombophlebitis. Changes in the vital signs are one of the first things to occur with pulmonary embolism because pulmonary blood flow is compromised. Fundal height is unrelated to the subject of the question. Calf pain is an indicator of thrombophlebitis. Level of consciousness may change as the condition worsens, worsening would indicate hypoxia. The nurse suspects that the client has a pulmonary embolism. Which is the most important nursing action? A. Monitor the vital signs. B. Elevate the head of the bed. C. Increase the intravenous flow rate. D. Administer oxygen by face mask as prescribed. The correct answer is D. Administer oxygen by face mask as prescribed. Rationale, because pulmonary circulation is compromised in the presence of an embolus, cardiorespiratory support is initiated by oxygen administration. Options A and B may be components of the plan of care, but they are not the most important actions. The nurse would not increase the intravenous rate without a prescription from the health care provider. The nurse notes that the four-hour postpartum client has cool, clammy skin and that she is restless and excessively thirsty. The nurse immediately notifies the health care provider and then performs which action? A. Checks the vital signs. B. Begins fundal massage. C. Encourages ambulation. D. Encourages the client to drink fluids. The correct answer is A. Checks the vital signs. Rationale. Symptoms of hypovolemia include cool, clammy, and pale skin, feelings of anxiety, and restlessness, and thirst. The nurse would check the vital signs. The nurse would not ambulate the client or encourage fluids until specific prescriptions are given to do so. There is no information in the question to indicate the need for fundal massage. In monitoring a client's response to disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, which findings should the nurse interpret as acceptable responses? Select all that apply. A. Symptom control during periods of emotional stress. B. Normal white blood cell, platelet, and neutrophil counts. C. Radiological findings that show non-progression of joint degeneration. D. An increased range of motion in the affected joints three months into therapy. E. Inflammation and irritation at the injection site three days after injection is given. F. A low-grade temperature upon rising in the morning that remains throughout the day. The correct answers are A. Symptom control during periods of emotional stress, B. Normal white blood cell, platelet, and neutrophil counts, C. Radiological findings that show non-progression of joint degeneration, and D. An increased range of motion in the affected joints three months into therapy. Rationale, because emotional stress frequently exacerbates the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, the absence of symptoms is a positive finding. Disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs are given to slow progression of joint degeneration. In addition, the improvement in the range of motion after three months of therapy with normal blood work is a positive finding. Temperature elevation and inflammation and irritation at the medication injection site could indicate signs of infection. That's all I have for this video. Please like, share, let me know if you have any questions. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.